That never gets old. Hi, I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. My family's been blessed to farm in Montana for over 100 years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well guys, welcome back to the channel. It is time to go do some grain hauling, even though I really don't want to because the prices aren't great right now, but if we don't start hauling grain now, we're never gonna get it done by next spring. Uh, I gotta feed cows quick, go check on the feeder, push up a little bit of the skid steer, and then uh, Colin's gonna get a conveyor chain change this morning yet before we start hauling grain with the Burgundies and auger, but we need to get that conveyor done, so it's ready when we need it too. Let's go. Placing the chain on the brand conveyor, and yeah, I think it's time to time to get a new one. Really wish that we were hauling grain bags out right now. You hear that echo in here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that kind of surprised me. But it's supposed to be 50 degrees middle this week, and that would not be very fun getting into the fields. It gets that warm and muddy, so we clean out some of these bins first. When we do start hauling grain bags, we have some capacity to maybe finish a bag out and put it in a bin if the elevator's full. So there's a little method to my madness. Ready for a cold start? Well, something smelled hot, so we opened this up in a hurry. And we had a loose battery connection, so that's why it wouldn't start. Let's see if we can't re-thread these. Bet you'll start then. That made me a little nervous there for a second. Thought we were gonna burn up a truck. Oh yeah, that's better. When you need 30 foot of extension hose because the hoses that are on the motor are two foot short. A lot of times you'll see a floor auger and a grain bin ran by an electric motor that stays on the auger itself. Not all of our bins were set up with power close by them years ago. So we set them up with hydraulic motor that goes on the end of the sliding shaft. We run them all off the hydraulic system that's on our auger. Our augers have uh, hydraulic movers on them. We run bin sweeps as well as the self propelled to move it around the yard. It works out really good. Loaded. This is the EGT elevator. It is the newest elevator that they uh, built in our area. We've had some other ones remodeled or added on to, I guess, since this one was built. But this one's pretty nice. Not completely automated. Uh, since we got electric openers on our tarps, you just hit the button and open the tarp up. We use radio cards or chipped cards, whatever you want to call them. We've got scanners that will read it. We just tell them whose grain we have, and everything is automated. It's pretty sweet. So, better on tarp. There's a tarp on rolling. There's a scanner. I was even close enough that this thing read it. Got my name up there. Double check that. Wait for the light to turn green. 
Now we just gotta wait for them to pearl a bit. Just got our weight, got the green light. Now we gotta make the loop to come over to the pit. Back at harvest time, you uh, probably saw we dumped on these ground piles out here. I'm gonna see if I can ask somebody how many bushels are there now on the three piles. My guess is it's, I'm not even gonna guess. million bushels out there on the ground piles. I asked him why they don't just put up more bins. He said it costs almost a million dollars to put up another bin per bin because there's no like bedrock here. So they got to go down so deep with pilings and whatever to get, get enough foundation to put these new bins up or put more bins up. So they're cheaper to do what they're doing, I guess, with ground piles and payloaders and big conveyors and haul it back in here in the winter so that shocks me that it costs that much to put up another bin. That's not good. It's bleeding. Well, that O-ring fixed the leak on the coupler, but the threads are leaking down here yet. I can't get those apart, so we'll have to take that hose in the shop, put it in the vise. It just wants to strip off. Well, we gotta run over to the neighbors before it gets dark. We're gonna borrow his uh, Steiger with the blade on it to clear some snow. That doesn't look like any fun, does it? This guy's got an exhaust leak or three. Cold, flat spot of tires. Man. Where are you going? You're supposed to fix this. I'm a Teflon tape. Oh, there you go. I bet you if you're growing, it'll make it come easier. <laughs> I broke a loose form, actually. Being the nice guy. Looks like we put that coupler on there and didn't put any tape on it, so. Well, I'll tape that up and that'll be ready to go. Good morning. So this is uh, Jared's Steiger that we're gonna use for pushing snow. It's got a 14 foot blade on it, about 6,000 hour tractor. So not really old, not really many hours for the age of the tractor. But we're gonna use this. I'm kind of interested in buying it actually. We'll see what uh, what I think of it when we're using it and uh, see if we can't make a deal with Jared. But this would probably actually pull our land roller and we'll use it for pushing snow in the winter. And I don't know what else, other things. But it does need an exhaust leak or two fixed on, on the muffler and the exhaust pipe. But besides that, pretty good shape tractor. Man, you're just chatty this morning. That'll work. 
I did check the water level last night. That was fine. I think we just gotta put some fuel in. Check the hydraulic level. We're good to go. We got a big load hooked on the back of here and we are ready to go over to the vents. It's a long load. kind of pull away from the bins and stuff like I wanted to. Now I need to take and push some of this stuff just out into the field. I gotta adjust manually, I just to get it back square and then I'll be able to push it straight. I got the auger all ready to go here on this bin. I checked the top, there's no snow cap or nothing on the top. Down the floor auger, it's working, and I hear Jake breaks. Here comes Colin. Good timing, bud. This thing definitely could use some LSWs to soften up the ride a little bit. Man, it's rough.
Well, I think we got all the bad spots in the road knocked open. As long as the weather stays clear like it's supposed to and warms up a little bit, this road can be ready to use again. So, that's a bunch of time off and miles off for us to get to town. So, I think I accomplished something so far today. So, we'll hop in the semi and get some uh, grain all down. Good to go. Look at that! Freshly graded road. I can, I can deal with that. Nice and smooth now. Fourth load for the day. Swath is still for sale, and the merger, if anyone's interested. We're getting loaded up here now, and yes, this bin yard is kind of goofy. It used to have these two bins there and there, like you're kind of running along the north side of the building. We built hoppers for them, moved all these bins with this arrangement, and it still works out pretty good with a center on those. So. I would have built a hopper for that, but that would have been a big thing. I really didn't want to try to build it for the time Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down there so you can follow along, get notified when the next uh, videos come out. And remember that Farm Focused is the only place to where you can get the fast egg merchandise. Merchandise. What's another good word for that? Not, it's not swag. Don't like that word. Apparel. There we go. Get the fast egg apparel at farmfocused.com. Links down in the description there. Remember guys, farm hard. Pretty harder.